Hello, my name is Professor Matthew Schmidt and I'd like to welcome you to genetics. In this session, we're going to see how we can use recombination data to construct a genetic map and we'll do a lot of permutations and variations of that type of analysis. So linkage and gene mapping. By the way, the video that's very previous to this one is very important in understanding the whole idea of crossing over and what it does to genetic data and what it means. So if you haven't watched that yet, it really is necessary to watch that one first before we do this one. So this type of um, idea and this type of a problem almost always comes up in some way or another. So, I mean, I can't stress the importance of it enough. It's a little bit lengthy. It can be intimidating seeming at first, but believe me, if you do it exactly the way I, I ask of you, I beg you, everything will be okay. Let's take a look at an actual cross in Drosophila, and let's set the stage for what we're doing here. So we're going to do a cross in what, what has come to be known the traditional fashion, where we take two pure breeding parents, get a doubly heterozygous F1. As we saw last time, we're then going to do a test cross and look at the types that exist in the offspring. All right. Now this cross is in Drosophila, and we're looking at two linked genes that happen to be linked on the X chromosome. Um, really, it doesn't matter. The same principles apply to linkage on any chromosome, but there are some advantages to using the X, and you'll often see the, the X chromosome in these type of problems. One of the reasons why is because this is the male over here. So this symbol here is what we use to denote the Y chromosome. Remember, even though things aren't the same exactly in Drosophila and humans, one thing that is the same is that the Y chromosome really doesn't have a lot of genes on it, certainly not the same ones that are on the X chromosome. So crossing over could never ever occur uh, in a male with respect to the X and Y, even though they're a homologous pair, they can never cross over. So the bottom line is we know what gametes we're getting from this uh, father. Let's take a look at the mother as well. There's two ways to look at this. So she's pure breeding for these two traits, white eyes and miniature body. These are recessive traits. So they're li she's little w, little w, so she's white eyed. And she's little m, little m, which is a, a miniature, a small body size. But remember, now that we're thinking of them as linked, we're drawing that line that represents the chromosome, in this case, the X chromosome. So remember again, also, if a crossover did occur in between those two loci, it doesn't matter in a pure breeding parent because there's just nothing else. You could try and mix this up as much as you want, but we're always going to know what gamete uh, is going to be able to be produced by this parent. The bottom line is, so we're crossing a white miniature female over here with a red-eyed normal male. Remember we used that term hemizygous for males with respect to, cro to genes located on the X chromosome because he only has one copy, right? He's W+, plus, which is the wild type red-eyed color. And he's M+, plus, which is all you can say about that really is his body type is normal. It's not miniature. Now, really, what's going to happen in the F1 is this whole entire chromosome right here, we know that we're looking at only the females, uh, by the way, in this case. And you'll see why in a moment. But to make a female, an X chromosome has to come from the, the mother, right? And an X chromosome has to come from the father. And there's no other possibilities except for those two. The chromosomes move as, as one, right? So if we looked at it this way, the F1 is heterozygous at both loci, right? Phenotypically, it's red-eyed, and it's got a normal body shape and size because of the dominance of those wild-type alleles, right? But here's where it gets interesting and what the point of this really is. So we're going to do a test cross here. And remember what a test cross is. You're crossing someone by someone who's totally recessive. And in this case, it's a male 
who only has one X chromosome, so this is a white and miniature looking male. But the bottom line is, I hope you can see why we're doing this, no crossing over can occur uh, between the X and the Y chromosome. Even though they're a homologous pair, it's not going on. And I might as well just say it, for reasons we don't have to go into right now, crossing over never occurs in males at all in Drosophila. So that's just something to tuck in the back of your head. But for now, my point is this. We can now look at all of the offspring, whether they be female or male. Because if they're male, they're getting this Y chromosome from their father, which is not contributing anything that has anything to do with W or M. If they're females, they're getting this chromosome from their father. And no matter what, it's little W, little M. It's not going to contribute to the phenotype. I mean, you need it, but... What's going on over here in this parent is really going to determine what the phenotypes are going to be because we know what we're crossing, what, what the gametes produced by that F1 uh, female who's going to be a mother. We know that what's going on in there, we know what it's going to mix with, if you will, either this or that. So basically, let's think about what would happen in this situation if no crossovers ever occurred, right? What would happen? So let me erase just because this is getting a little busy. If we just did this cross and a crossover did not occur at all, all of the offspring would look parental, right? Because this entire chromosome would go into the offspring, and whichever one of these two that it mixed with, it really wouldn't matter. One set of the offspring would be white and miniature, right? And if this chromosome was the one that went, they would all look red and normal. And as you see over here, that's why we, we refer to those offspring as the parental types. They resemble one of the parents. When you do it this way, that usually means the original parents from the P generation, right? This one rep, uh, resembles that father. This one resembles that mother. A recombinant offspring could not be produced in this case. Just to recap, remember, usually independent assortment is what creates the recombinants. When the genes are linked, only crossing over can create the recombinants. So I just said if there's no crossing over, there's no recombinants, and you'd only see the parental types. But now, very importantly, let's find out what would happen if a crossover does in fact occur in between those two loci, okay? So I'll just draw that as an X, and we can see what type of, uh, how the chromosome will be rearranged. So following along in red, we're going to get one chromosome that now has W with M plus together. Remember what's happening. I'm drawing it. This is the convention and the best way to do it. But the chromosomes are both getting cut and rejoined to the other one. All right. And then we'll, go, we'll get also on the bottom. And if one happens, the other has to happen. The W plus with the M, right? I believe I animated that. It's probably going to ruin my, my drawing. But you can see there. And look what I did. I used the, the different color. I, I'm going to fix that just... I know you get it, but if there's a crossover there, we'll keep this in blue, the W and the M plus, and we'll keep this in red, the W plus and the M. But think about it. So now, if what we've now called this red chromosome uh, it ends up in the offspring, we're going to have someone, someone, a fly, who looks wild type, so red-eyed, but miniature, right? And that's this class right down here, a recombinant class. And the other recombinant class is what we've drawn in blue here. It's going to be white-eyed but normal body size, right? Right here. So those are the two recombinant classes. Now, if you see this data, this is what it basically means. We, we had said last time that pretty much always... Uh, in this type of situation, you'll see more of the parental types than the recombinants because probably crossing over doesn't occur all of the time, right? Mm -hmm.